Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss anti ulcer drugs by Professor Sabashik. So first we'll see what is peptic ulcer. So the etiology of peptic ulcer is not clearly known. It result probably due to imbalance between the aggressive and defensive factor. So what are the aggressive factor? So aggressive factor includes acid pepsin bile h pylori and defensive factor include gastric mucosa sodium bicarbonate secretion prostaglandin nitric oxide high mucosal blood flow innate resistance to mucosal cell so when there is a imbalance between these two factor it will lead to the peptic ulcer a variety of psychosomatic humoral and vascular derangement have been implicated and the importance of helicopylori infection as a contributor to ulcer formation and recur uh, recurrence has been recognized so it is also observed that h pylori is also involved in the peptic ulcer in gastric ulcer generally acid secretion is normal or low while the deficient mucosal defense mostly impaired mucus and bicarbonate secretion play a greater role whereas in duodenal ulcer the acid secretion is high so now we'll see the classification of anti ulcer drug so first class is the reduction of gastric acid secretion which includes h2 histamines for example cimetidine proton pump inhibitor for example omeprazole anticholinergic drugs like pyrazepine prostaglandin analogs like misoprostol the second class of anti ulcer drug include neutralization of gastric acid it is nothing but the antacid so first one is the systemic antacid for example sodium bicarbonate non systemic antacid for example magnesium hydroxide now the third is the ulcer protectives for example sucral sulfate and colloidal bismuth substrate and the fourth one is anti h pylori drug for example amoxicillin clarithromycin so basically these are the antibiotic which we use to treat uh, and uh, which, which we use to treat ulcer now the first class is the reduction of gastric acid secretion so uh, yeah, just now we have seen h2 histamines proton pump inhibitor anticholinergic and prostaglandins analog so first we uh, now we'll see each class of drug one by one in detail so first one is the h2 antihistamines for example cimetidine danitidine famotidine and roxatidine so now we'll see the mechanism of action so h2 receptor blocker what it will do h2 receptor blocker is nothing but the h2 antihistamines so h2 receptor blocker binds with a histamine 2 receptor on the parietal cell and thereby it competitively inhibit the action of histamine on this receptor and ultimately reduce the gastric acid secretion so here what happens our drug that is h2 histamines it will inhibit it will bind with a h2 receptor on the parietal cell so on the parietal cell h2 receptor are present so cimetidine or such drug bind with a h2 receptor which is present on the parietal cell and thereby reduce the gastric acid secretion now we'll see the pharmacokinetics so it is well absorbed undergo first pass metabolism food does not interfere with absorption they are partially metabolized by liver and excreted by kidney now we'll see the uses so and h2 antihistamines are used in peptic ulcer gastritis prevention of stress induced ulcer zollinger ellison syndrome pre anesthetic medication and gerd now we'll see h2 antihistamine drugs first one is a cimetidine cimetidine has anti androgenic action 
it increases plasma prolactin level and inhibit estrogen metal metabolism in the liver on prolonged use it may result in gynecomastia gynecomastia is nothing but the increase breast size in male decrease sperm count impotence and loss of libido in men cns effect include confusion delirium and hallucination in the elderly headache dizziness rashes and diarrhea can result cimetidine inhibit microsomal enzyme cytochrome p450 and interfere with the metabolism of many drugs next is the ranitidine ranitidine is preferred h2 blocker as it has several advantages over cimetidine ranitidine is more potent longer acting has no andro- anti androgenic effect no cns effect as it does not cross the blood brain barrier and does not inhibit microsomal enzymes significantly only adverse effect are headache and dizziness next is famotidine famotidine is similar to but more potent than ranitidine headache and rashes can occur roxatidine is similar to ranitidine but is more potent and longer acting now the next class of drug is the proton pump inhibitor so here in the diagram you can see here this is the blood stream this is the parietal cell here the stomach is present and the sodium potassium atpase is present on the lining of the stomach so what happens here the gas stream bind with a cck receptor present on the parietal cell histamine bind with a h2 histamine receptor present on the parietal cell and acetylcholine bind with a m2 receptor present on the parietal cell due to this what happens the carbon dioxide combined with water and form h2co3 this then form bicarbonate that is hco3 and h plus ion this hco3 then secreted into the blood stream in exchange chloride is secreted into the parietal cell this chloride through the chloride leak channel it comes into the stomach so chloride ion again is come into the stomach and this h plus ion through the sodium potassium atpase this h plus ion enter into the stomach this h plus and cl combine to form hcl now our drug that is proton pump inhibitor inhibit sodium potassium atpase pump as it inhibit the sodium potassium atpase pump it ultimately inhibit the secretion of the gastric acid so proton pump inhibitor effectively block gastric acid secretion by irreversibly binding and inhibiting hydrogen potassium atpase pump that reside on the luminal surface of the parietal cell membrane and it and example include omeprazole esmoprazole lensoprazole pentoprazole and rebiprazole now the next class of drug is anticholinergic drugs so the atropine reduces gastric secretion the dose needed result in severe adverse effect so a derivative of atropine that is pyrazepine selectively block gastric m1 receptor and inhibit gastric secretion by 40 to 50% without significant side effect so just now we have seen that the binding of uh, the binding of acetylcholine with m2 receptor is required for the gastric acid secretion so if we give anticholinergic drug so obviously it will inhibit the gastric secretion it also inhibit the secretion of gastrin mucus and bicarbonate it is used as a adjunct therapy now next is the prostaglandin analogs so prostaglandin that is pge2 and pgi2 synthesized by the gastric mucosa inhibit gastric secretion enhances mucus production as well as mucosal blood flow and exert a cytoprotective effect so basically the prostaglandin analogs reduces or treat the gastric uh, reduces or treat the peptic ulcer by providing the cytoprotective effect 
they act by binding to the pg receptor present on the parietal cell and inhibit cyclic amp production misoprostol is a synthetic pge1 analog given orally it is special value in preventing nsaid induced gastric ulceration because nsaids are pg synthesis inhibitor diarrhea and muscle cramps are very common now the next class of drug is neutralization of gastric acids antacids so antacids are basic substances given orally they neutralizes the gastric acid and raises the ph of the gastric content pepsin activity is also reduced as we all aware that pepsin is acting only below ph so antacid include systemic that is sodium bicarbonate sodium citrate non systemic like magnesium hydroxide magnesium trisilicate so now we'll see systemic antacids sodium bicarbonate is rapid but short acting it get absorbed from the intestine leading to systemic alkalosis there is rebound hyperacidity as a gastrin level increase due to the raised gastric ph sodium load may increase it is not preferred for long term use because of the above disadvantage so what happens here this uh, bicarbonate and nh co3 combined with hcl form nacl h2o and water so basically systemic antacid how it will act it will neutralizes the gastric acid and ultimately help in the treatment of uh, peptic ulcer but we cannot use long term because it has a following or it has a about disadvantages then non systemic antacid non systemic antacid are insoluble compound that react in the stomach with hcl to form chloride salt and water the advantage here is they are not absorb aluminum hydroxide is slow acting food further slows its neutralization capacity it is also an astringent and demulcent form a protective coating over the ulcer the aluminum the aluminum ion relaxes the smooth muscle resulting in delay gastric emptying and constipation so here we can see the disadvantage here is the constipation now the next is the ulcer protectives sucral sulfate and colloidal bismuth substrate so sucral sulfate in acidic medium it polymerizes to form a viscous gel which firmly adhere to the base of the ulcer it remain there over 6 hour acting as a physical barrier and prevent the contact of acid and pepsin with the ulcer it is stimulate the pg synthesis in the gastric mucosa and it thus promote the healing by protecting the ulcer so basically ulcer protectives how it will act it will act by protecting the ulcer sucral sulfate is not absorbed and is well tolerated bismuth salt that is the next is the bismuth colloidal salt so colloidal bismuth substrate and oral administration chelates the protein in the ulcer base and form a protective covering or coating over the gastric mucosa it also inhibit the growth of h pylori on gastric mucosa and stimulate the mucus production and pg synthesis by this action it promote the ulcer healing in 4 to 8 weeks it causes the constipation and black stool so these are the we can say the adverse effect so basically ulcer protective how it will act it will form a protective covering over the base of the ulcer and thereby inhibit the action or inhibit the contact of acid and pepsin with the ulcer now the last one is the anti h pylori drugs so the gram negative bacterium that is h pylori is adapted to living in the stomach infection with h pylori is associated with gastrointestinal disease including the gastritis and peptic ulcer various combination regimen are tried with clarithromycin amoxicillin or tetracycline metronidazole omeprazole and h2 receptor blocker for 
one to two weeks for the treatment of h for the treatment of h pylori infection that ultimately lead to the peptic ulcer so this is all about the anti ulcer drug